Amen. Amen. For all of you that are visiting for the first time, usually, usually, we are at the benediction time. But God has some work for us to do this morning. Amen. One other thing that I forgot, and I forgot to let Sister Springfield know there will be no children's church today. Uh, 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 I, want, I, want, I want them in here because this is very important. And, and, and I pray that you be patient with me. But uh, whatever you have going on that you that's pressing beyond the word of God, then that's between you and God. But I'm going on. Before I start, I want to thank some people. I want to thank some. I want to thank my. I want to. Uh, I want to take time out and thank my wife. Thank Sister Parker. Thank Sister Heron, and uh, and the deacons, because I want you to understand. A lot of things that go on in the house of God. Is not put together. It's not coordinated solely by the pastor. Everybody's putting our hands to the plow to make it what God would have it to be. Amen. 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 Always remember, you don't get anywhere by yourself. You're going you're gonna to need some help along the way. Amen. 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 So I thank you. I thank you. I'm thankful for these, these young men that gave their life to Christ. Sister Green, I'm thankful that, that you sent a prayer up to God with a desire to see your children baptized. I'm thankful for that. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that God answered your prayer. Amen. 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 Get us quiet another hand, if you will. Thank God for my wife watching over me because there's a lot of things that could have fall by, fell by the wayside today. But she was right there. So I appreciate her and I pray that she appreciates me. Amen. 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 Scripture has already been read. But I just want to work with this one verse coming out of the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 39. Amen. Amen. And it reads, He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. You can take your seats if you can. Sister Green, I have learned, if nothing else, through this journey that I've been on, is that whatever decision I make, I'm going to put it in God's hands. Amen. 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 Walk with me just for a little while. We have already studied this lesson in, in Sunday school. Matter of fact, Deacon Davis taught it two Sundays ago. But I thought it was befitting that we had these young people to make a decision, to make a decision to accept Christ into their life. And one of the things about making a decision is you can, sometimes that decision is not due until a week later, but you've already made a decision on what you're going to do. And sometimes we will turn back from our decisions that we, will, that we have already made. But the truth is, the thing about life is that no matter who you are, no matter your age, no matter your attitude, at some point in time, you're going to have to make a decision. Amen. 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 Walk with me just for a little while. Here we are. Not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. I've come to understand that that oftentimes our decisions are made on what we want 
when we want it and why we want it. But some decisions have to be put in God's hand. Walk with me. Here we are. Here we are. It is decision time. According to the Pew Research poll, the average man, the average woman, the average child will make anywhere from 200 to 300 decisions per day. You have to decide. You have to decide when you want to get up, when you want to lay down, what you want for breakfast, when you're going to eat breakfast, where you're going to eat breakfast at, who you're going to eat breakfast with, how long do you want to stay with them, who you want to be bothered with throughout the day, do you really want to fool with them that day, do you want to be, you've got to make a decision one way or the other. And sometimes, sometimes it is so much of a frivolous decision is that you can make it just like that. But what these young men have made today is a very conscientious decision that you can't turn back now. You have put your hand in God's hand and God has grabbed hold of your hand. And the only way for God to leave you is that you have to leave him. Walk with me if you will. That is the decision that we all had to go. That is the path we all had to travel. And this is where we are at. Notice something about Jesus. Jesus is now in the Kendron Valley. He is in the Kendron Valley. He has just experienced his last supper, if you will. It was a short walk to the Kendron Valley. It is better known as the Mount of Olives. If you really want to get into it, it is known as the Garden of Gethsemane. When you get to the Garden of Gethsemane, now it's defined as the oil press. Walk with me, if you will. He is there now. He has taken three friends with him. I won't deal with that this morning because that's another sermon coming down the road. Now you have to understand, he is in the Garden garden and he is praying to them. He is, I mean, he is praying in the garden. Jesus is in agony. He is in pain. No one has whipped him. No one has beat him. But Jesus has to make a decision that's going to cost him his life. And now you have to understand. One of the things you have to understand, you always have options with decisions. Either you can do man's will or you can do God's will. Walk with me if you will. Now he is praying again. He has came and he has seen that these three men that he brought, his inner circle brought, he brought them with that they have fallen asleep. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Now he comes a third time. But this time Jesus said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. I'm not going to deal with the cup because that's coming later. But what you have to understand, he said, let this cup pass from me. Jesus is having to make a decision now. And then he goes back. He goes back and he prays one more time. And finally, at the end of the prayer, he gets up and he said, not my will, but thine will be done. There are decisions that we have to make every day. We have to decide whether we still love someone, whether we don't want to be bothered with someone, whether we don't have time with someone, whether we're going to pick someone up on time or we're just going to be late. Decisions have to be made and someone has to make them. Walk with me if you will. Now, if you are individual, if you are single, that decision is pretty simple. You only have to worry about benefiting yourself, taking care of yourself. But when you become a child, but when you become a man and you become married, when you become become a woman, you become married. When you have children, now your decisions affect the whole family. You have to make a decision on that. Now let's go into the house of God. When you become a pastor, let me explain something to you. You just don't make decisions based off of what you want. You got to take the whole house of God into consideration. Walk with me if you will. If you ever become president of the United States, your decision shouldn't be made on a certain party. It should be made for everybody. Now you got to walk with me. One more thing, but here Jesus is. He is in the garden. He is prayed and he understands that there's a decision that I have to make. But Jesus has said Jesus' decision is more in depth than my decision because my decision was to accept him. But Jesus' decision is that I've got to sacrifice my life for the whole world. It's decision time. Jesus said, he asked that question, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. In layman's terms, what Jesus is asking is, is there another way? Is there another way that I can remove the stain of sin from man and not have to be mocked, not have to be beaten, not have to be whipped, not have to be spit on, not have to be falsely accused, not have to be talked about, not have to be looked down upon? Is there another way? I just want another way out right now. That is the free will of Jesus that's talking. That is the man side of Jesus that's talking. He 
is asking the question, is there another way? Is there another way? I just need to know that I can provide salvation to them without having to bear my cross and being nailed to the cross. I just want to know, is there another way that I can get out of this thing? That I don't have to go in the grave three days to restore man to his endemic place. Restore man back to you. Give man access. Is there another way? truth is, the truth is, when Jesus got up, he knew that that was the only way. That was all he could do. That was the way that God wanted him to go. That was the, God, the way that God was telling him to go, and he dare not turn back from it. And I want you to understand something this morning, that you accepted Christ into your life. Dare not turn back from Christ. Walk with him all the way. It's going to get tough sometimes. It's going to get rough sometimes. Some people are going to fall away from you. Some people are going to abandon you. Some people are not even going to want to be known around you, but stay with God. Now you've got to understand because the truth is, Jesus being God already knew the future. How do I know? He already knew that Peter was going to deny him. He already knew that Judas would abandon him. He already knew that Judas would betray him and his people would abandon him. Jesus already knew these things. Not only did he know that, Jesus already knew. Jesus already knew that the very people that he came to save, that they was going to treat him like a dog. They was going to false accuse him. They was going to lie on him. They was going to beat him. They was going to treat him as nasty as they could. Jesus already knew that. But the most agonizing part, the most painful part, the most difficult part of it all is is that Jesus knew that no matter what, if I take this cup, if I drink this cup, I still got to be separated from God for just for a little while. That was the hard part. That was the hard part. Your wife can leave you. And you'll be all right because you'll go and find another Susie Koo. Your husband can leave you. But you already know that Johnny Mac is standing in the corner somewhere already. But when you know that you got to be separated from God, that is a painful feeling. That is an agonizing feeling. Jesus knew. Jesus knew. Jesus knew. Jesus knew. If he failed in the garden, he was going to fail on the cross. Help me if you will. Now let me explain the garden to you. Because when you ever, when you ever have to make a decision, there's always something on the left and something on the right. Walk with me if you will. There are two gardens in the Bible, two main, two prophetic gods, gardens in the Bible. It is the Garden of Eden and the Garden of Gethsemane. Am I right about it? Walk with me if you will. But Jesus said, thy will be done. He had made this decision. He was sticking to this decision. And nothing or no one was going to turn him back from his decision. Now you've got to help me now. Because the truth is, there were two gardens, there were two men, and there were two will. Garden of Eden and Garden of Gethsemane, the two men are the one that did the one that was created by God and the one that was the son of God. The two wills are man's will and divine will, God's will and free will. Now the choices come before you. You have to understand what happened in those two gardens. And then when you get to the end of it, you understand which garden you really want to be standing in when the angel comes for you. Walk with me if you will. Because in the Garden of Eden, you have to understand it where sin first began. But it's in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus got the victory over sin. Somebody walk with me this morning. You have to understand that it is in the Garden of Eden. Walk with me if you will. That Adam disconnected from God. But it's in the Garden of Gethsemane that God disconnected from the world. You've got to come on and walk with me. You've got to understand it's in the Garden of Eden that Adam and Eve were forbidden. Forbidden from eating from the tree of life. But it was in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus made a decision right then and there that I'm going to sacrifice my life that I can give you more eternal life. You've got to come on and walk with me. You've got to understand that it was in the Garden of Eden that Eve spent a lot of time with the serpent. But it was in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus was totally focused on God. Walk with me just for a little while. You've got to understand that it was in the Garden of Eden that Adam and Eve hid from God. But it was in the Garden of Gethsemane 
remedy, if nothing else, if you don't understand nothing else, that Jesus boldly presented himself to God. Uh, walk with me, if you will. Uh, it was not only in the Garden of Eden, but you got to understand, it was in the Garden of Eden. Uh, walk with me. That Adam and Eve gave in to temptation, but it was in the wilderness that Jesus overcame temptation. Sometimes you just gotta get by yourself. Uh, sometimes you just gotta move people out of the way. Sometimes you just gotta let them know I'm going on if I go by myself. You got to understand, but not that you got to hold on just for a minute. Because notice this: it was in the Garden of Eden that the sword was drawn. The sword was drawn to keep Adam and Eve from ever going back into the Garden of Eden to be connected to God. But it was in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus put the sword away and said, "I made a right away for you. Just go on in now." Now you got to understand. Notice something else about the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden. You got to understand the Garden of Eden was for Adam and Eve to care for one another. But it was in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus brought his three friends with him, Peter, Peter, John, and James. Guess what? When they fell asleep, Jesus said, I'm going on anyway. Just sleep on, my friend. Just stay there if you will. But I've got a higher calling. I've got a better purpose. I'm going on if i got to go by myself. Now you got to understand. Notice something else about the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, you never see, you never heard, you never read, where Adam and Eve prayed at any time. They never thanked God for nothing. But it was in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus prayed night and day. Walk with me if you will. You've got to understand that in the Garden of Eden, I want you to understand this, that man lost everything because of Adam and Eve's selfishness. But it was in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus decided, I'm going to restore it all to you. Walk with me if you will. While I'm trying to tell you this between the the Garden of Eden and the Garden of Gethsemane is, is that in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve did what they wanted to do. But in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus did what God told him to do. You've got to make a decision if you're going to walk with God. You've got to be committed the whole way. You can't turn back now. you come too far. You may be young, you might still be a teenager, but you still got to go on because the journey is yours. He's going to be with you. He's going to reveal things to you. He's going to show you how to make it, but you've got to make the decision to stay faithful to it. It's decision time. It's decision time. It's decision time. You got to decide which way you're going to go. Now, hold on. When I was a young man, I just believed that I didn't need to ask anybody else any questions or let anybody make no decision for you. Matter of fact, even now, I don't even like people asking me questions. I already know the answer. I'm going to give you anyway. But the truth is, what you've got to understand is, is that I've got to make a decision that I can live with, that my conscience can live with, that my soul can live with, that I've been committed to live with. Walk with me, if you will. Because many people believe that they can manage themselves. But the truth is, what happens is that their problems start to manage them. But I'm going to put it in God's hands no matter what. You know why I'm going to put it in God's hands? Because man is no more than a trichotomy. Some say it's four, but I'm going to just stick with what the Bible say. Man is made of a trichotomy. It is flesh of man. Flesh of man is always aware of what? Worldly aware. It is the conscience. The conscience is always self-aware. And then you've got the spirit. Now let me work right here with this and I'm going to get on out of your way. When it comes to the flesh of man, you've got to understand that the flesh of man always knows what's going on in the world. Right now, you can tell me what Beyonce is getting ready to do, what she's going to wear, where she's going to be. You can tell me who shot Tupac. You can tell me how Tupac got in the grave. You can tell me all those things. You can tell me what's going to happen right now with TMZ. You can tell me what Oprah is about to buy, what Oprah is going to wear, but I don't really care about that. Now, when it comes to the conscience, you got to understand that the conscience is all about self. It's all about self. The conscience is about what I will tolerate, what I won't tolerate, who I will be with, what I won't be with. I don't have, I don't want to be bothered with you, I'm going to keep moving. If I like to be around you, I'll stick with you. But that's me. That's all about me. That's self. But I've got to stick with the will of God because the Spirit tells me that we are all, that the Spirit is always aware of what God wants. Oh, y'all ain't working with me this morning. No. You've got to understand, I'm going with the spirit. I ain't, going, I ain't going with what the soul is saying. I ain't going with what the flesh of man is saying. I'm going with what God is saying. You've got to understand, 
The reason I'm going with what God is saying, because guess what? It was God that changed Jesus' mind. And if he can do it for his son, whatever I'm concerned with, I know God is concerned about me. Walk with me if you will. Now you may look at me and I may seem confused sometimes, but I'm not confused. I'm just waiting on an answer from God. You may think I'm procrastinating. You have asked me two days in a row what we gonna do, Pastor. I'm not procrastinating. I'm just waiting on God. I want you to understand something. When you see me weary, when you see me tempted, when you see me despondent, when you see me disappointed, when you see me discouraged, I am waiting on God. That's the decision that I've already made right there. But let me let, me let you know. If you're going to wait on God, you're going to wait on God. You're going to need some patience. Mm. If you're going you to wait on God, don't bring it to the table and then come pick it up the next day. You got to stay. You got to let it stay there. Because God's going to put it in your heart. He's going to give you an answer. But now what I want you to understand, I don't want you to get into the way that old people like me do. Walk with me. It's when God has given me an answer and then I go ask the devil, is that, is that confirmed? I, when God gives you an answer, get the moving. That's what he tells you. You got to go. Think about this, and I'm getting ready to close. Think about when Moses was bringing the people out of Egypt. Walk with me. They were on their way out of Egypt. 1.2 million people. Walk with me, if you will. The walls of water had built up on every side. These Israelites had never seen such a miracle as that, and they stopped dead in their tracks. But the problem is, the one that was supposed to be making the decision, Moses, Moses, Moses stopped also and called on God. What did God tell him? What are you looking at me for? I've given you the answer. I've shown you the way. Get the move. Your decision. But guess what? You don't have to go it alone. Because I'm begging you right now. I'm pleading with you. Is that you need to link up. You need to link up with a spiritual mentor. Yeah. You need to link up with some spiritual mentors. Yeah. Don't, don't let nobody come and sell you that they are a Christian. Because when you got to sell your faith, let God show you who they really are. And then you can hold on to them. That's the way you go. Anytime a man got to sell you something, it ain't worth nothing. Not God's word. Walk with me, if you will. It's decision time. And you have made your decision. God will reveal things to you. He will, he will direct your path. And if you stay faithful, he'll keep you on the journey. Come night or day, Rain or sunshine, hell or heaven, he'll be there no matter what. No matter what. When people come to you and say, look, we're going out just for a few minutes. We're going to do a little thing and then we're going to come back. Nobody else will never know. God will know. Walk with me. I'm not, I'm not telling you what I heard. Telling you what I know. So I want you to stay faithful. I want you to stay faithful. You're going to stumble every now and then. But that's all right. God's going to pick you up. God's going to pick you up. Don't worry about what people think about you. Don't be concerned how people may treat you. And when people laugh at you, that's, that, that, that's when you say that you are a child of God. Tell them thank you. Thank you. Couldn't have made it without you. You know why? Because now you just show me who you are. I got to go on by myself now. Guess what? You see everybody in here? 
they on your side. They on your side. They on your side. And if you be in need, and one of them pass you by on the highway, you come get Pastor Gray. Come get me. Because we got to an answer to God. And I want you to understand something, New Mission Baptist Church. We have to answer to God for these three men. Stand on your feet if you can. We're not just excited that you came into the kingdom. We are excited because this is our opportunity as seasoned saints to plow the path before you to let you know which way to go. Look to your right. You see that deacon edging close to you? You should have him on speed dial right now. I'm serious. I'm serious. We have gotten away. We have gotten away from the plan that God had for us. God just didn't create deacons just to sit at the front of the church. The purpose of deacons is, is to be there to be the example. In all cases, in all situations. And I guarantee you, if you ever need food, shelter, or medicine, call him. If he don't have it, he know where to come and get it. He is always at your disposal. Amen. 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 Oh, Father, we speak blessings over these three young men today. We pray you guide them. We pray that they can be a leaning post. We pray you keep them. Because, Father, as soon as they walk out of this church, Satan is waiting at the door. But, Father, whatever they may have to face, we put it in your hands. Let them know that even if they stumble today, they can still get it right. Once you're saved, you're saved. So, Father, keep them in your arms. Protect them in every way. And, Father, let them, give them the discerning spirit to know who's for them and who's against them. Father, I pray that all those that cry out, that let my light shine, that these three young men will see their shining light. This is what we pray in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 May the grace of God keep the doors of the church open. If there be one now that don't know God, that has a desire to come into his kingdom, if there be one now that already knows God but have backslidden, have fallen away, haven't been fellowshipping like they should, Father, we give them the opportunity right now to come forward and just raise their hand for prayer. If they have a desire to be restored, let them come now. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. And most of all, your mercy. Amen. Amen. By the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ and the sweet communion. May it rest and abide in your lives this day and forevermore. Let the church say amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes. He has spoken. 